Hello everyone and thanks for coming back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at a simple flight controller. Well, they're not so simple, but we've kind of come to expect these things to be all-inclusive, uh, all this stuff on one board. But what makes this one so much different is now we're starting to see these flight controller ESC combos for our whoop builds or our micro builds. I just think these are going to become the thing. If they're not already in your life the thing, we're probably just going to see more of this development. Uh, but this one has the USB port pointed directly off the board horizontally, and that frees up a lot of different options when it comes to frames, frames of frame designers, and all the things that make up our, our micro quads specifically. Of course, this one does not have the connector pins on it, but you do see there are places for that. Um, for your reference, I have my TS-80, which has a very small pointer on it, and I'm going to point to it. These do not solder to these. The only reason I bring this video up is because I've found recently that many people depend upon uh, YouTube or non-social media sites for information about RC development. So typically I don't do component reviews, but I think maybe five minutes on these things uh, could be helpful to some. But these are your solder pads right here. They do come with connectors, but you can choose whether or not it comes pre-soldered or not. And uh, so we'll go around the horn here real quick, but I just wanted to draw your attention. These pads are nice and good size, nice spacing, good design, like that. This is what we've been trying to solder to, or some variant thereof, up to this point right here is our boot button. So if you need to press your boot button in order to flash your flight controller, you can do that. Uh, also note, I'm just going to go around the top side, but note that uh, like if you keep your eye on these... The solder pads are on both sides, and that is great. Let me zoom in a little bit more. So we've got solder pads for all our different uh, components that need to connect to the flight controller uh, on both sides, but they're only labeled on one side. So let's go around the horn, as I said here. Of course, we've got our battery voltage plus and minus right here. This is for our motors, and the motors are cleanly labeled. That's nice, M3, M4. That corresponds to the motors on our ESCs. These you can read relatively well. I think it's where it gets a little bit crazy is over here, but we've got the LED ground 5 volt and your buzzer, and it's very well laid out. If those of you aren't familiar, your buzzer negative here on this pad where it's BB negative, and then to your 5 volt or your buzzer plus. Uh, over here to this side, we have a 4.5 volt to 5 volt pad. I'm kind of confused. Maybe you guys can enlighten me as to something that might not run at 5 volt or it needs to stay below 5 volt or 5 volt is, is its maximum. I've just really never seen that tight of a tolerance, but if it exists, this board has it covered. Uh, we've then got our ground. I think I'm out of focus again. Let me try here. There we go. We're back in focus. Uh, we've got our RX1 right up here, our TX1 right there, and then we have our inverted S-Bus. This little pad down here is your 3.3 volt for Spectrum satellites, so that's awesome for our Spectrum friends out there. Uh, down over here, we've got RX2, TX2, video out. Next to it is video in, and then ground, and 5 volt. And then, of course, we've got the USB port right down over here. Pretty clean board. Uh, difficult to read, but as you can expect... Uh, we've got a lot of components on here, so <laughs> there's a lot to stuff on here. Also, some of the highlights. It's got an F411 processor in it. It's got a 2.5 amp back, which I think is a good thing. It's also got an LC filter, so hopefully that will give us a little cleaner video uh, when it comes to any sort of interference we might get from motor backflow off the uh, power. It's using the MPU 6000 gyro, so it's not super sensitive to vibrations. It can handle up to 4S. Uh, the amp rating is up to 12 amp, 15 amp uh, is burst. Burst is not detailed as to how long a burst or peak is. I suspect that's just a moment or two, not long at all. And if I didn't say it already, D-Shot 600 is installed by default, but you probably should be able to run higher than that. But you can experiment with that. I'll have one in a kit yet, but I'm planning to use one. I want to use more boards like this. I they, Nameless RC still has the traditional boards with the USB up. But I just see this as the way of the past. I, I just can't imagine why frame designers would want to use this design anymore because it makes it more difficult to build. And this has just about all the features that this one has on it. Uh, I do think it's missing one of the UARTs. Uh, but you can I'll, I'll link below to the manual if you want to see that. Also, I'll go ahead and I'll put the pin out on screen now so you can see all the things that we just went around the horn on where I laid out where the buzzer pads and the LEDs and the, the strange 4.5 volt up to 5 volt uh, pad is. And then we've got that tiny little 3.3 volt for Spectrum Satellite, which I respect. I used to use Spectrum quite a bit. I've kind of moved away from it. 
uh, not because I didn't like it or had fail-safe problems because, you know, I fly so close in with the house, uh, just because I needed to use more equipment that more people in this space was using, and FR Sky has been dominating. I do think I forgot to give you a look at the other side of the board, make sure I get this into focus. You can see we've got the pads on that side as well. As I previously mentioned, not just the pads for components, but also the pads uh, for our uh, ESCs, so we can solder our motor wires right to it. Oh, and I forgot one thing about this. This has a special spot for your capacitor. So these two circles right here are your capacitor or as the manual puts it, the capacitance. Sorry, I had that way down low. I wasn't looking through the, the video finder. I was looking at the board itself. So these are our two boards to the capacitor right up here. Uh, this is for your plus side. This is your minus side. If you're not familiar with capacitors, this part, the side that has the stripe down it, that's the negative side. So you want to put that side over here. And it's nice because if you've got a frame or a canopy that's designed to go right down on top of it, you just have a couple little wires that would come off the capacitor pads. And then the props would just probably rotate right over the top of it. Uh, of course, you might want to do something to secure it. At the very least, you want to wrap heat shrink around that. I've learned recently that that's something that we should all be doing. Uh, but a good looking board. I want to draw your attention to... Um, another good board, I just think there's a little bit of a flaw. The Pyrodrome board, I've got two of them. I've got one in this, uh, if you can see that. That is a toothpick, kind of. It's got those silver motors on it, which are sexy, and some HQ props. Um, I haven't flown this a lot, but, you know, I do have a toothpick of my own. And I put the Pyrodrome board in it, and it is challenging to solder. I've got this so zoomed in, you can't hardly see. These little tiny pads are all you've got to work with, is, are the actual pins, and they are so so close together. Matter of fact, the wires on that, like if you're wiring one of the Diatone Mamba motors, which has a much more standard or thicker, thicker sized wires, it's going to be a, a special sort of challenge in order to get these all on there and not have them touching. With the thin wires that come on those motors, I actually had a problem with at least two of them touching because I was using my smoke stopper and it would start to boot up and then it would stop. And I was like, uh oh, I got a problem. I had my magnifier out in order to find it and I had to just remove those two and try again it's it's tricky if if you want to punch it through and then solder it from the other side i think that might be the best way i don't think that's going to be easy either um but this is the pyrodrome board it also has a lot of the same specs that you find on the nameless rc and other boards out there it's got a two and a half amp back which i think is good the five volt rail or where the beck is that is something that is oftentimes dying the other part is the esc this pad right here that might concern you if you've got one of these pyrodrome boards um, I believe this is ground. Yeah, that's ground. Uh, this little post here off of your USB port, it's fine to get solder onto that. It's all the same pad. It's all ground. It'll be fine. I very much like this board. I think it's got a good, smart layout. It's got easy access for building purposes. I sure hope we find some quads uh, that ready to flies that come with this, and I hope that it stands up to all sorts of abuse. The last thing I have is kind of a question mark about price. Um, namelessrc.com doesn't show a price. It doesn't look like they're set up to sell. So maybe we have to either wait for somebody to import these or to the, for them to be sold through another source. But right now I don't see a buy button, nor do I see a price. Um, so I'll put links to where you can find these down below eventually. <laughs> and then you can know the price when I know the price, I guess. I'm sorry to keep you waiting and make you think, oh, I got to keep checking this video to find prices, but you can go to namelessrc.com and see if something changes on their website. As of right now, there's no price point on this. I expect it to come in around $37 or $38, maybe even less. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the section down below. I appreciate your time, and thanks for watching.